What a wild weekend of college football we had. No introductions needed once again. Let's get right to the highlights. We start off between the hedges. 12th ranked Arkansas and Georgia. First quarter, remember, A.J. Green not playing, so Aaron Murray takes it himself on the ground. We're tied up at 7. Third quarter, Pick Suey's up 17-10, though. And here's Ryan Mallett. You're going to get used to hearing his name quite a few times this year. Finds Ronnie Wingo on the wheel route at 24-10. Pick Suey, but to the fourth quarter, and Georgia makes a run. How about this? 14 unanswered from the Dogs. And Washawn Ely goes into the end zone. We're tied up at 24, but 24 seconds left. Ryan Mallett. He gets this comeback going to Greg Childs. Childs, please. 40 yards to the end zone, and Arkansas takes the lead 31 to 24. So, last chance for Georgie. It gotta go through the end zone. Aaron Murray, he throws this one 65 yards on the line. And if you're Arkansas, you gotta knock it down. You gotta knock it down. Well, they make it interesting because they actually keep it up in the air. But it falls to the ground incomplete. Great effort from the Bulldogs, but they fall to one and two. And Arkansas, they're undefeated 31-24 final in Athens. Appalachian State, I mean UMass, taking on Michigan. There's Rich Rodriguez. Would there be an, another familiar sighting from an FCS team at the big house? Well, Daryl Stoneham tried to change that. Look at the scoreline. They're down 17-7 to the Minutemen until Stoneham goes 66 yards to the house. It's 17-14. UMass on top. 45 seconds later, Denard Robinson goes back to Stoneham. I mean, it worked once. Let's go again. Nine-yard touchdown, and Go Blues up 21-17 up at the half. Third quarter, they add on to that lead. Mike Shaw, 34 yards up the middle. He had 12 carries for 126 and three touchdowns. And Michigan's up 28-17, and they're not done adding on to that scoreline. Denard Robinson. He had 241 through the air and 104 on the ground. Here's an eight-yard touchdown. It was an interesting game, though, down the stretch. But the Maize and Blues still pull it out, 42-37 the final. They moved to 3-0 on the season. Let's go to War Eagle country. It's Clemson and 16th ranked Auburn. Kyle Parker, what a game from this kid. Second quarter, the Tigers already up 10-0. Look at Jamie Harper. Full extension. And Dabo Sweeney and Kyle Parker. There's Dabo Lonnan on the sidelines. Take another look. You want to talk about giving it all for the play? The big man Harper extends for the 24-yard touchdown. It's 17-0. Third quarter, we're tied at 17. Cam Newton was 7 for 14, 203. And here he goes to Terrell Zachary, 78-yard touchdown. Off the pump fake. Where's the defense? Newton's pump. They come back from 17 down to tie. It's a 24-17 game. And how about Andre Allington tying it up? He had 140 yards on 22 carries. Fourth quarter, we're tied at 24. Look at Dwayne Bell gets knocked out cold by Aaron Savage. So we go to OT in the overtime session. We're tied at 24. Newton, he's got a man in the end zone. Darvin Adams, he's open, but he just overthrows him. So they would have to settle for West Byron. 39-yard field goal. Book it. Auburn takes a 27-24 lead, but Clemson would conjure up a good drive on their possession of overtime. Kyle Parker, third and five, rolling out. Has Jerron Brown wide open, but he overthrows him. Parker had been getting lit up in the game by the Auburn defense. Maybe that affected him on that throw. Just a little out of reach from Brown, so they have to settle to a field goal. Chandler Catanzaro, 26 yards. We're tied at 27, but no sub. We have a false start penalty called on Clemson. What, what exactly happened? Well, Matt Skinner, the snapper, just a little hitch right there. So you got to back him up five yards and kick it again from 31. So Catanzaro, you know what? He hit the first, so the 31 yard will be no problem, right? Ah, uh, no. Auburn, they get the break. They get a lucky break. Camp Newton's pumped, and Auburn goes to 3 0 in the season. They beat Clemson in overtime 27 24. Let's go to East Lansing. It's Notre Dame and Michigan State. These two teams always seem to play crazy ball games. A look at Dane Christ. Well, he would have a sensational game. First quarter, Chris, go to your money man. Michael Floyd, fade route, touchdown from 70 yards. It's 7-0 Irish. Second quarter, Irish still leading 7-0. But this time, Chris uh, does not make a good throw. Instead, throws into coverage. And Johnny Adams, he's Johnny on the spot, you could say, picks it off. And Sparty, ensuing drive. Kirk Cousins back in the end zone to Keyshawn Martin. Touchdown. We're going into the half tied at 7. Third quarter. Third play of the second half. Edwin Baker, they have a great two-back rotation going with Baker 
and Le'Veon Bell, and, and Baker goes all the way to the house, and no, no one's catching him. Power and speed, 56 yards, and Sparty's up 14-7. But Notre Dame, this would just be a back and forth second half, so if you see one team up, don't worry, there'll be a tie. And there you go, Kyle Rudolph, we're tied at 14. But on third and 11, you know what? You'd like to run a screen pass off a of blitz. It looks like it's going nowhere, but Le'Veon Bell says, I'm getting the first down. You can't stop me. Picks up 12 and moves the chains. Brian Kelly not happy. And then next play, let Bell finish it off. 16 carries. Or I should say 17 carries under 14 yards, and that touchdown, Sparty's back up 21-14, but again, it was a back and forth half. So here you go, Theo Riddick, 10 catches, 128 yards in that touchdown. So it's 21 all. When are we, this is just getting ridiculous. The students can't believe it. Fourth quarter, still tied at 21. Christ, just a minute 30 into the fourth quarter. Give it back to Floyd, there you go. Another touchdown, it's 28-21 Irish. But when is this madness going to end? Cousins rolling out. Finding B.J. Cunningham. Look, he's wide open. Where's the defense? 24 yards and we're tied up. Cunningham at 101 yards and that touchdown catch. So it's 31-28 in the overtime. Irish got a field goal. Look at the play clock. It's at zero. But they let the play happen anyway. And Aaron Bates, the former high school quarterback, fights Charlie Gant. Let's celebrate, Sparty. Michigan State. The cojones by Mark D'Antonio. You could say it was a heart-stopping victory because at the end of the game, D'Antonio suffered a heart attack. He is in the hospital uh, recovering, but what a victory for the Spartans. 34-31, the final in OT. Notre Dame falls to 2-1-2 two, one two on the season, so Brian Kelly had that great start with the win over Purdue. Now he's dropped two straight. Michigan State's 3-0. You can't say enough about Kirk Cousins. He is really manipulating the offense very well through for 245 and two touchdowns. Michigan State just keeps rolling in their non-conference slate. Then probably the game of the night, Iowa heading into Tucson, the Valley of the Sun, to take on Arizona. The Hawkeyes have not won a non-conference road game in, in quite a while, you can see. In the first quarter, it didn't look good as Ryan Donahue was, was blocked by David Roberts. And then a couple plays later, Nick Foles go to the end zone. David Douglas, five-yard touchdown. And the Wildcats, U of A is up 7-0. Iowa on the comeback trail, though. Marvin McNutt, oh, well, never mind. Picked up by Trevor Wade, and he was in runner. Well, that was 85 yards for the touchdown as he was in and fast forward. 14 nothing Wildcats. Second quarter. Third and goal for the Hawkeyes. Stanzi, you got to get on the board here, and they do so. Jewel Hampton, four-yard touchdown. It's 14-7. Cats. Ensuing kickoff, though. Travis Kahn starts from his goal line. And gets some great blocks, and the special teams are oh so special. And Cobb, he goes 100 yards for the touchdown. That was 100 yards for the touchdown, by the way. 21-7 U of A. They go in 27-7 at the break. Third quarter. Stanzi, a great start to the third quarter. Play action. Finds Daryl Johnson Koulianis for 37 yards. And the Hawkeyes cut the lead in half, 27-14. Fourth quarter. Punting now to William Wright, but oh, William fumbles. And look at Sean Prater, Johnny on the spot, recovers. Take another look, though. Off the dome of William Wright. And look at Prater, right on it, recovers it. So Iowa, they take over. First play, Stanzi. Go to Marvin McNutt. And originally ruled incomplete, but look. He has possession. He's got the right foot in. That's a touchdown. 66 yards receiving on three receptions for McNutt. And Iowa right back in at 27-21. Two plays later. Oh, looky. Broderick Ben, see you later. Pick six, and Iowa can take the lead. Well, they missed the point after touchdown. What is going on? So it's a 27-all game. Arizona and Nick Foles, they drive. Third and goal. Foles give it back. To William Wright, four-yard touchdown, 34-27. Foles with 28 for 39, 303 and two scores. So Iowa, they've got to come back to tie the game. Stanzi, well, he wouldn't get the chance because that offensive line was just ravaged. Ricky Elmore with the sack. They had three sacks on this final possession from the Hawkeyes. Stanzi here sacked by Justin Washington. Stanzi sacked six times in the game, and Arizona upsets Iowa 34-27. That's all we have. I'll see you next time on the Kitchell Sports Network.